an hour into NFL wow. free agency and we're off and running to catch up with all the news here on the DNVR Broncos podcast the free agency <laughs> frenzy that we've got and we're rolling with Super Bowl 50 champ Todd Davis Todd this is your first time rolling in free agency from like a day-to-day -day media member I know, and it's starting off with Hank throwing me under the bus. Like, <laughs> golly, man. They, they were blaming me. They were blaming me. So what? Just let they, it happen. You no, just no, snitched. I'm not taking that. I'm not taking that. You just that. snitched on me. I always get blamed. You, see, your thing is you never. But just never, don't say anything. Just say it's not my fault. No, you never. You know what get, I'm saying? You've never been blamed for anything. Just plead the fifth. And you've never, like, done the something fifth. wrong. It's never your fault. But when so it is your fault, if I got to get it goes up. down, I can't take you with me. Oh, <laughs> damn You're it. You're snitching on me quick. Nothing goes down around me anyway. I mean, this is so fitting because you just pulled the Jerry Judy, Henry. You just said the eye in the oh, sky no. don't lie. Oh, no. And oh, you no. just threw Todd right out there. And Man. it's fitting because Jerry's gone. Does that mean you're next, Henry? Um, No. But I guess, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I wouldn't know. See, because I feel like the, uh, the Cortland Sutton in the situation where I, I don't get to decide that. Mm. I just have to sit and wait. That's what Cortland's doing. It <laughs> is. I mean, he... Well, we'll get into Cortland in just a second. But, Todd, we haven't talked to you since the Jerry Judy trade went down. Broncos send Judy to the Browns for a fifth and a sixth round pick, equivalent of a fourth round pick. What do you think? Um, it's an interesting trade. I think, you know, anytime you draft a player with the first round draft pick and end up having to trade him for a fifth and a sixth, you know, it just didn't work out. Uh, it sucks. I definitely like Jerry Judy. I think he has a lot of potential. Mm. Uh, this is about the team that wanted to go. I know last year we started off wanting a second round. Was that what we wanted? First. Mm -hmm. First. Jerry. Yeah, so fifth and the sixth is definitely not where we <laughs> want to be, I guess. Yeah, and Todd, you, you can't mention Jerry Judy's time in Denver without saying potential. And yeah. you said it here, and that's kind of what I'll remember Jerry Judy's tenure here with the Broncos as is potential yeah. in a good way and a bad way like i still look at some film like actual nfl film and say damn that guy's got potential yep. but it's like at what point does potential need to be like thousand yard seasons when you're yeah. drafted 15th overall so like three potential, years ago and, yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean yeah the the he had i keep thinking about the one season he had a thousand yards from scrimmage with hackett and russ and you have to see that as an outsider and say, there's obviously something here. Like, if anybody can get 1,000 yards in that situation, he can go to Cincinnati or wherever and put up big numbers. With the Browns, who knows? But at least for them, they get to say, we're giving uh, Deshaun Watson all the chances he needs to succeed. We've got the running game with Nick Chubb. We've got Jerry Judy. we got Amari Cooper. we got this defense. If this doesn't work, nothing's going to work here. Yeah, and I think it really benefit from having like a seasoned older vet in Amari Cooper, a Bama guy. Yeah, his whole time here, like he didn't really have like an old vet to kind of show him mm -hmm. the ropes as far as like how to play that position in the NFL. He was just going on purely off talent, so I think he'll actually benefit from the situation up there. Yeah, Me especially too. another Bama guy that mm -hmm. he's learning from, and a similar type of player as well. I think this man, when you swallow the pill of the Broncos are rebuilding, this makes sense. The, yep. this, this makes a lot of sense because really the biggest thing the Broncos got in return of this is $13 million in mm -hmm. cap space. Like, Ooh. Whoa. Broncos news. We got breaking news. Broncos signing safety Brandon Jones. Three-year deal. Jeremy Fowler. How about that? Whoa. So we're an hour and 11 minutes into free agency and we get our first deal so in 36 hours, the Broncos signed two safeties after moving on from Justin Simmons. What can you tell me about Brandon Jones? Oh, boy. Um, I'm just tweeting out this link real quick. So, I mean, 
that's a pretty versatile safety. Um, obviously, what started his career with the Dolphins, I'm pretty sure he's stuck there. Or was it? Oh, there we go. Yeah, so Texas safety um, goes to the Dolphins. Yeah, he's been in th- with the Dolphins ever since. 6'1", 191. Um, I remember the draft pod with him. Again, it's the size and the speed combination that people really liked. Uh believe yeah, third round pick. Um five star recruit. Um third round pick out of uh Texas. Yes. Mm. He, he is a Texas guy. Um So the Broncos two starting safeties now, both Texas products. Exactly. That's very interesting. They would have PJ would have been there the end of PJ's time would have been the beginning of Brandon Joseph's, I believe. Uh, Caden Stearns also. Brandon Jones. Brandon Jones, what I say? Joseph? Wow. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, tore his ACL a couple years ago. Yeah. That's my quick things that come to mind. Well, and, and here, I read. We, here we go. We know the, de- the, the details of okay. this deal. Three years worth over $20 million dollars with $12.5 million in guarantees, according to Jordan Schultz. He's your starting safety with this type of money. Yeah, he is. Oh, yeah. They, they just wanted to do, a, uh, I guess, a cheaper cheaper lineup, maybe. Yeah. Well, let's see. The Broncos were going, so three years, $20 million, over $20 million, so what, almost seven a year, mm-hmm. and then you sign P.J. Locke for two years, $7 million, so three and a half million a year. So you're paying just over $10 million for your starting safeties when Justin Simmons, you saved $14.5 million by moving on from. Interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what this guy can do. Um, I don't know much about him just yet. I know we'll do a deep dive and see, you know, how he really plays the position. Um, but we definitely have two new starting safeties in Denver. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. Um. Yeah, I'm definitely excited. So I'd imagine he's got to be your free safety. Um, yeah, PJ got to play in the box. He's got. PJ's a great player, but I think he 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 does best in the box, similar to how it was set up last year. He was the, he was a strong safety last year. I think that that really boded well for him, um, being able to come down, tackling the box, playing the box. This guy has to be able to roam around the field, and make plays. Definitely. Um, so just looking at PFF <coughs> stuff. A couple things that stand out. I, I guess you really like these, the 16th rated safety last season um, with two starters. That's like top eight among free safeties, you would imagine. Um, opposing passer rating. So passer rating when targeted, 68.9. You'll love to see that. Um, they they credited him with um, only being targeted 11 times, which I guess when you're playing deep middle kind of makes sense. Was he the true starter last year? Because that's yeah. like, yeah. Yep. Um, eight catches on those for 41 yards, touchdown, two picks though. And that's, uh, that's kind of what does it. Um, so definitely ball hawking deep guy. I remember the college tape. He had some like nice hits. I, I, I'm not sure if that's held up just cause I don't remember watching him a whole bunch in the NFL, but I do like it. I would have gone Jeremy Chin, but that would have been like a cheaper deal for a likely a worse player. So, I mean, Especially when you have PJ box guy, it's probably a second box guy, which might not be a great idea. Jeremy Chin was your guy. He was my guy. Now Brandon Jones is your guy. Texas safeties uh-huh. are your guy here. So Todd, uh, one of the reasons that the Broncos are doing this, moving on from a highly paid superstar, all pro Justin Simmons, <laughs> and going with um, a, a cheaper route, still good players, but a cheaper route of safety, is Sean Payton doesn't feel that the value at that safety position is worth what safeties are getting paid. And I think we can look around the league and say, it's not just Sean Payton who feels that way. It's the entire NFL because of how many veteran safeties have been cut over this past week. Is Do you agree with that? Do, does, do safeties not have the value that, that they had five years ago? I think that, you know, just as time goes on, guys are going to get paid more and more. Um, to me personally, I look at the quarterback position. I don't think quarterbacks are worth 50 million. Besides Patrick Mahomes, I don't, I feel like in a lot of respects, quarterbacks are overpaid. I think Baker Mayfield came and did a good job. Did he deserve three for 100? Woo. I don't know. I don't know if, you know, quarterbacks, mm-hmm. you know, that are not Super Bowl winning or not, 
always in the playoffs or making big plays deserve their year, but that's just the market for quarterbacks now. And I think just like that has changed, I think the market for safeties has changed as well. And so although you want to look at safeties and say that they don't deserve to make 18 to 15, but if you're a top safety, that's what you make now, and that's just the market. Yeah, yep. it is. And let's continue to break this down. We've got some more breaking news, and we want to get down uh, into more Brandon Jones conversation yes. after I tell you about our friends over at Coors Light. When the Broncos bring Brandon Jones into town for his physical, they want to probably chill with him, get to know him, kick back with the Coors Light. If you're going to do that this week, we got 60 degree, d- degree days this week. Coors Light is the perfect beer to reach for. If you want to chill, Coors Light is that beer to grab. So make sure to check out our friends over at Coors Light. And if you want to get it Instacarted straight to you, go to CoorsLight.com slash DNVR where they're going to hook it up. So go to CoorsLight.com slash DNVR. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. And uh, go check out Bet365 as well. Um, right now is a really fun time to be betting. Most, I mean, I guess I won a bunch of money on Scotty Scheffler this week. And, uh, oh, Montana legend Sean O'Malley Montana. defending his title. Montana legend. We we love that guy up there. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so I got money on both of those, but also it's March, and that means mm. college basketball betting. I'm super excited um, because I'm going to be sitting in the bar so much these next few weeks with the conference tournaments, and then of course for March Madness. I sort of like. The bar during March Madness might be peak bar, especially because like a bunch of us, we always just bet um, every single underdog. So every single game, you take the underdog, and I think we wound up up like 20 units last year. Yeah. Or no, it was 22 years ago and like 13 last year. So you make 10 bucks a bet, you're up 200 the first time, 130. That's a great time. Um, definitely a great betting time. And also uh, you can make bets on teams to win their conference tournament. So, for example, I took Montana to win the Big Sky at uh, plus 300, and they were the three seed coming in. One and two seeds both out already. Now they're down to plus one nine. So feeling good about that. Buffs, obviously. Um, all sorts of stuff going on. So make sure that you get over there and sign up with our friends at Bet365 um, because they uh, they don't do ordinary. So you get a couple of different options here. $25 in bonus bets. Um if you uh, if you place fifty dollars or more on a pregame or live in game same game parlay um, on the on an NBA game or uh, ten dollars if you place twenty to fifty dollars, um, download the Bet three six five app. Use the code DMVR three six five when you sign up and check our boost to see why it's never ordinary. Bet three six five. Uh, then all the way down at the bottom. Must be twenty one or older. Physically located in Colorado. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call or text one eight hundred Gambler. All right, we've got some more breaking news. Here it is. Lloyd Cushenberry has found a new home. No longer with the Broncos. Lloyd Cushenberry signing with the Tennessee Titans right now. So. We kind of knew this move was coming, that Lloyd was mm-hmm. not going to be a Bronco, and now it's official that his time in Denver is done. We don't know the terms of the deal yet, but I expect Lloyd is getting paid a lot for this. Yeah, yeah. without knowing the numbers, I would say if if the Broncos had to had the option to keep him for $10 million or less per year, terrible decision. Like, they should have brought him back for that number. $9 million? $9 million less, absolutely should have done it. Um, if it's above that number then I, I get why you would cut costs. Still might come back and bite you, though. Yeah, I think that, I mean, I've Sean said it publicly, um, and I've also heard it <laughs> privately. The Broncos are very high on their depth at center. Alex they Forsyth, are. Luke Wattenberg, expect that's the route that the Broncos go. I don't think they're going to let Lloyd walk for... Eight to twelve million dollars a year, and then try to replace him by signing a six to eight million dollar center. I think this is a move where you look around. Garrett Bowles is making a lot of money. Mike McGlinchey is making a lot of money. Ben Powers is making a lot of money, and Quinn Miners, who we'll talk about in a second, is about to make a lot of money. Would it be great to have Lloyd Cushenberry here because of the year he had last year? Yeah, but at some point, I mean, you can't pay everyone on the offensive line big time money. And then oh, also expect to have a quarterback, wide receivers, tight ends. And then on the defensive side, too. So you, you do have to pick and choose at some places. And center's clearly one of the places that, that Sean is going to go cheap with here. Yeah, and if you look at O-line play, the one position, probably the only position you can go cheap with is the center. Mm. It's usually the 
besides Jason Kelsey, he's in the league of his own. It's usually like the least athletic player that you have, <laughs> and um, usually the smallest. Uh, a lot of double teams in pass protection, work with the guard, double teams in the run game, so it's two-on-one. Um, he's not isolated a lot like a tackle is or sometimes a guard versus very really good player. So mm-hmm. he has a lot of help on the inside. you got a body to your right. you got a body to your left. There's only so much space for you to get beat. If there is a space where we're going to go cheap, I'm glad it is center and not one of our tackles. Yep, and having talked to a bunch of the linemen last year um, – what they all said is that Lloyd took a huge jump in terms of making all the calls that while like everybody can kind of see, like, it seems like he's not getting beat as much, all that sort of stuff. What they all pointed to was like, we are identifying the mic every single play the exact right way. We're, we're setting up these runs exactly how they're supposed to be set up. We're not missing a lot of free rushers. And they all said like, that's Lloyd with the help of the new offensive line coach, which is the other thing they brought up equally, uh, kind of taking that next step. So that's the other thing you kind of miss, especially if you have a rookie quarterback, not having that center to do those sorts of things is scary. At the same time, we talked about this during the, the watch along um, for the first hour of free agency, but you know, it, it's tough to say that you want to have a sixth round pick and a seventh round pick compete for a starting job. Those guys can't prove that they can play in the NFL without getting a chance to play, though. And so if you want to hit on those late round picks, the only way to hit on them is to let those guys get on the field and play. Um, so I, I don't mind the decision, especially for a high price tag. It kind of makes sense. There's a real chance, though, that, you know, for Alex, it's uh, that, that they... Christian Wilkins to the Raiders. Interesting. Oh, um, that's a. Uh, we'll come back to that one because yeah. I got some insights there. Uh, Alex Forsyth, uh, like, just doesn't have like the strengths and the athleticism to be able to handle it. And you know, it's I'm more so probably the athleticism, maybe a little bit of strength with Wattenberg as well. Um, but that's that's going to be a problem for August and September and on, I guess. Yeah, and a, a big reason why the Broncos are going to have to pay uh, Quinn Miners or get ready to pay Big Quinn is uh, Landon Dickerson just signed, uh, what is it, a four-year, $84 million Mm -hmm. deal uh, to be a guard, the highest-paid guard in the NFL now. And he's good, but he's not Quentin Nelson type of good where it's like, uh, no one's going to touch that deal. No, he jumped Quentin Nelson's deal, and Quinn Miners is sitting there. If you go by PFF grades, Quinn was way better than Landon last year. Mm-hmm. Quinn's going in to a, a contract year where he can get paid after this coming season. So the Broncos might have to dish out $20 million per year for Quinn after this season. So again, that's just another reason why, even if you move on from Garrett Bowles, let's say after this season, you mm-hmm. save some money there, all that money plus more is going to go to Quinn Miner. So Quinn, while he's not getting paid right now, he had a great day the first day of free agency today. Yeah, I think as NFL players, we're happy when anybody gets paid. We're never <laughs> yeah. mad about it because <laughs> it either it's going to elevate you no matter what. If you are ranked under that guy and he resets the market, everybody gets more money. Yep. If you're above that guy and he resets the market, you're like, oh, heck yeah, I'm about <laughs> to get paid. So, you know, as players, we're never mad when anybody gets paid. We want everybody to get top dollar because that means when your day comes, you're probably going to get paid too. Yep, and – I, I would be really tempted to get the Quinn deal done as early as possible, you know, cause right now he's got the last year on the deal and then he hits free agency. You can say right now, like, Hey, we'll give you basically what you're worth. Just maybe take a couple million off the top. No. You get, you get all that security <laughs> though. As a third round pick, a D three player, you get all the security <laughs> right now. We're paying you for five years. If you just sign this deal now, That'd give, be fine. yeah, I, I hit free agency. <laughs> yeah, everybody's telling me I'm nice right now. Yep, I just true. started. Yep, 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 it's yep. true. I don't even feel like I've hit my stride yet. I mean, this is coming from a former player, Todd. Um, Pat Sertan sat in that exact chair, and he kind of said the exact same thing to us. Yep. Like, oh, I, I'm just going to wait until like my market just keeps growing and growing and growing. And this signing from Landon Dickerson is huge for Quinn Miners. Oh, yeah. Because now guards are going for $20 million a year, yep. and Sean Payton doesn't value the safety position much anymore. Yep. But he might value guards more than any other person in the <laughs> NFL, so he's not letting a great guard leave, I don't think. Yep. Nope. Yeah, break the that's a good point. Also, Christian Wilkins to the Raiders. That's a... Mm. Uh, Big. Literally. That's a big, and that's a very Raider move. Like, that's uh-huh. a that guy is in Oakland... 
you know, he is an Oakland Raider. Vegas Raiders haven't proven that they're actually like mean and tough. Um, but Wilkins, I was in the locker room before that Miami game and there was one offensive lineman who was talking to some other guys saying, just talking about all the dirty stuff that Christian Wilkins does at the bottom of the pile and basically said like, you know, what? I don't even care. Like if he does something, if he like grabs somebody's ankle or something, I'm just going to start swinging at him. Like, I don't even care this week. If he does it, it, it is what it is. And, uh, that is that is the guy who is now coming to the division. And again, like that's that to me is he is an Oakland Raider. He that's that's one hundred percent just like a perfect fit in my mind. Hopefully, it doesn't work out. Well, and th- there was a lot of noise that the Raiders were going to go after Chris Jones mm-hmm. if he ate the hit free agency, and the Chiefs locked him up. So it's no surprise that then they go after the second best defensive tackle mm-hmm. on the market there with Chris Jones staying. With Christian Wilkins, now it's a lot of pressure on the Broncos' interior defensive or offensive line, which helps Quinn getting paid. Also does just put more pressure on whoever is going to end up placing, uh, replacing Lloyd Cushenberry. But do we know the terms for? I haven't been looking. So the contract is four years worth one hundred and ten million dollars. Wow, eighty-four point seventy-five million guaranteed. That's a new high, huh? Not no. who doesn't beat Chris Jones. It doesn't beat Chris Jones. What did he do? <laughs> did you yeah. see? Did you see Chris Jones's deal? Five years. It was initially reported as like the first 95. numbers that were coming yeah, out were first three. Like five million guaranteed. Yeah, over a hundred and sixty. Oh dang! Hundred and sixty million dollars. Oh wow. So we knew Chris wasn't going to be taking any hometown discounts because yeah. he showed it last year. He said, fine, if you guys aren't going to pay me, I'm going to sit out and miss week one of the season. I'm going to be sitting in one of those suites instead of down on the field playing. Yep. Um, and he wasn't messing around. And I guess it all worked out for him. $160 million for a guy that's like 29 years old. He's probably still in his peak right now. But how, how, long do big, how, how long do defensive linemen stay in their peak for? Like, do they fall out early 30s, or can they stay in it longer? Um, that's Aaron Donald. I don't know. Exactly. He's still going at well, a very high level. Calais Campbell. Yeah. Well, yeah. Those guys can stick around. I feel like sometimes they I – I can't think of examples of guys who don't work out. Like, Jarrell Casey just got hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, but he still played for 10. He, d- I, he did play for 10. Pro bowler for seven. Like, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I can't think of any Broncos. I mean, Mike Purcell's still going. At like 34. So, yeah, Christian Wilkins, he's going to be a dog for a while. Man, that is a uh, it's a big move in the division. It's huge. I was surprised they didn't go quarterback first, though. It's usually want to lock up that quarterback deal because it's the biggest one. Yeah. But if they have extra money, you know. Unless they aren't spending big money on a quarterback. Because Kirk Cousins, is Kirk Cousins the only big money guy who's still on the board? Yep. Let's let's talk about that because I think someone is gaining lots of steam uh, around Denver, but also in the NFL that might end up being a bigger money guy than people think. Got to tell you about Volo mm-hmm. Sports before we get into that, though, because now, I mean, I mentioned it, that 66 degrees, I think, today in Denver. Now is the time to get into your spring and summer sports over at Volo and use the code DNVR3 when you sign up to get your Volo pass for only $10 a month for the first three months. That's half off your first three months. And seriously, now is the time to get in where Volo has everything, every single sport that you want to play. That $20 a month, which drops down to $10 a month with the code DNVR3, gives you unlimited access to pickups and league drop-ins as a sub. It includes league discounts up to $50, free or discounted access to tournaments, fitness classes, and events. Volo Pass is the premier monthly membership that gives members unlimited access to sports events and social activities every single night of the week. So if you're looking for something to do, check out our friends over at Volo. They've got it all. So go to Volo, uh, check out Volo Sports and use that code DNVR3 for $10 off the first three months. And shout out to our friends over at Empire today. There's nothing that I would change about working here at DNVR. Everything is perfect. I think it's great. But there's one thing that we needed to upgrade. It was just one. And it was our floors. Uh, And thank God we have new floors. We're looking good. There's no more metal. 
It's all wood. It's nice. It's clean. It's crisp. Empire Today definitely came in here and take took care of us. And they want to take care of you. So all listeners can receive $350 off uh, when they use promo code DNVR. Restrictions apply. See EmpireToday.com forward slash DNVR for details. All right. So mm. that's kind of the one domino that hasn't fallen yet is yep. nothing with the quarterback since free agency has opened. A couple of moves before free agency opened. Um, Baker Mayfield, speaking of $100 million, gone, off the board, three years, hundred over $100 million, mm-hmm. getting over $30 million per year. Yep. Todd, it's good to be a quarterback. It's great to be a quarterback. <laughs> backup, it doesn't even matter. You could be a backup, third string, just find a way to make a couple good passes in the game. Yep. You'll stick around and, and make some money in this league, especially if, especially if, you're, if you're a starter, man, like – just one good year. You need one good year, <laughs> and you can make twenty five to thirty a year. Case that's, Keenum, that's good money. It's good money. Case yep. getting paid. Yep, been getting paid. Private jet case. Yeah, it's getting paid. How about <laughs> this? We go thirty minutes into the show and don't even mention Russell Wilson oh. because it's been a busy morning. He finds a new home in the opposite fashion of Baker Mayfield. Russ flames out, I don't know how you, what the right way to describe his time is in Denver, and signs with the Steelers. He's still getting paid, but the Steelers aren't paying him anything. The Steelers are paying him the vet minimum, $1.2 million. The Broncos pick up the other $37.8 <laughs> million. So the Broncos aren't getting really any help from a cap standpoint here um, uh, and a cash standpoint, not that we really care about billionaires' monies, but um, Broncos will be paying Russell Wilson to play for the Steelers. We'll dive into this move probably later in the week mm-hmm. for keep, keep this one focused on Broncos and the moves they're making, but your guys' initial reaction to him going to Pittsburgh. Uh, I can't wait to see that game. Yeah. Uh, opening night, I think it's going to be phenomenal. Mm. Um, on top of that, a million dollars. I don't even know what quarterback – Maybe Demarcus Russell you could get for a million dollars <laughs> right now. Right now, that's about yeah. it. I don't think any other quarterback is hopping exactly. off the couch. Blake Bortles, no, nobody's hopping mm-hmm. off the couch for a million. Um, so they got the absolute steal of a lifetime. If he's even just okay, they were they're winning. Yeah, I mean it's a great fit for him too because I can't remember he was there's fourth quarter comebacks and there's game winning drives and he was first in one of those last year and second in the other. <laughs> And so when you just sub him into that Steelers team where they they don't they want you to just hand the ball off over and over and over again and let the running game win and let the defense win and then we hit 2 minutes left in the first half or 2 minutes left in the game it's time to time to put on your big old rust shoes and get going. I think that's I mean it's it's a perfect fit. I think it's the the best team that was needing a quarterback this offseason um, with the Vikings probably being the other one that's fairly close. Um, so if you're the Steelers, you're happy because I guess probably Kirk Cousins is the best quarterback on the market. I would have had Russ number two after him, um, and you got him for cheap, and that's a that's a pretty good situation to be in. And then some, uh, I, I agree with what you guys said, so looking forward to that game. That game, uh, why don't just start the season with it? Week one, oh, yeah. Monday night football, yep. Russ comes back mm-hmm. to Denver, Oh, you know they're going to be playing that clip of Sean yelling at Russ on the sideline and, so many yeah. times in and that the, game. They're playing the quarterback carousel, too. Oh, yep. yeah. Does he get a welcome back video, like a thank you video like no. they do? Absolutely not. I mean, no way. It, you'd have to almost be doing it because he's getting booed that whole game. Yeah. Like, like sometimes you get booed when you like come out for the first time. Russ is getting a lot of boos when he comes back, especially if it's week one, especially if it's prime time. Um, it, it, the, if you want to play him a video, you can play him a video, but you're doing it knowing it's just getting booed the entire time, which might be worth it. <laughs> They're not going to do that. They're not, but it might be worth it. They gave him enough. Mm-hmm. $120 million <laughs> yeah. dollars for two mm-hmm. years. You, you don't get to thank you. When you go, when your best season's, what did he technically go, seven and eight? No. Do you think his? Uh, you think they took down his uh, UC Health posters already, like on the freeway? <laughs> <laughs> they will yeah. still be up by next year. I'll those tell you what: gone. all of the uh, Let's Rides that were around the building, uh-huh. those were scrubbed this past year, Dang. and he was still on the team. Yeah. So yeah, I think everything's gone. Um, but Kirk Cousins still available. Report coming from Diana Rossini last night that the Broncos did talk about going after Kirk, but it just doesn't make sense with the position they're in. They're rebuilding. 
right now. It doesn't make sense if you're deciding to rebuild to then go after the highest paid quarterback in the NFL who uh, he's going to be getting $40 million potentially. If Baker's getting 30, yeah. Kirk's going to get $40 million. So it does not appear the Broncos are going to be in on that. But we're sitting in here an hour and a half into free agency and no one has signed Kirk Cousins. It appears that it's may- probably going to be the Vikings or the Falcons. Mm-hmm. Falcons seem to be picking up a lot of steam there. I don't think either of you guys are too sad about the Broncos missing out on Kirk. No. If we've come to the conclusion that we re- rebuild, yep. is that is that the conclusion everybody's came to now? It just appears like it. Uh-huh. Do you think they are? Looks like a duck, quacks like a duck. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, a rebuild. Yeah. 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 You don't need to squeeze as many wins as you can out of these next two seasons, especially for... 45 i mean so the, i mean the report was he told the vikings he'd go back to minnesota if they give him two years 90 million dollars fully guaranteed i bet yeah yeah go i mean because he's been it's been what eight consecutive seasons his money's been fully guaranteed seems to be a thing that matters to him which makes sense um but yeah i uh for that price tag it's not worth it if if, if he was 10 million bucks sure bring him in like make these next two years a little more enjoyable it, it's not worth that much money though save that money spend it when you're good well, as KW says, the the Brandon Jones signing doesn't say rebuild, though. Uh, wait, 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 wait. You just replaced Justin Simmons with Brandon Jones? That's rebuild. I, that's, that's only you got 25 younger years Simmons. old. 25. I, I think what KW has to be pointing to is the money, though. Like, going out and uh, it, signing P.J. Locke for $3.5 million, okay, you, you do have to have players mm-hmm. on your team, and I do think that P.J. Locke can be a solid safety, solid starter in the NFL. Um, I think Caden Stearns, well, we'll talk about it more, the, the exact fit, but you just went and got Brandon Jones for you know almost $7 million a season. That's, that's not, not a, just like replacement type of, that's real money. I don't think so. I mean, also looking back, he was a part-time starter last year. That's um, what I was asking you. You were right. Yeah. Yep. He, was a, he was a part-time starter. Um, started the playoff game, which I'm nine minutes into now. Um, but I do think... Like, you weren't just going to not sign anybody. Like, that's just unrealistic. I think the, the, the signings I count as signings that rebuilding teams don't make are $10 million a year or more. And I still think, maybe after this one, who knows, but I, I came into this expecting one signing worth $10 million a year or more. Um, and I would still call that a rebuild. Yeah, because I don't know, honestly, on defense, if you're not a on your rookie contract and you're a starter, Who's making less than seven million, really? Besides, exactly. You know, like honestly, if you're like a Josie and Alex, but even that, it. even that is not big money for a linebacker. No. Like seven million is like kind of middle of the road pay for a linebacker. Mm-hmm. And I feel like on all the out of all the positions on defense, linebacker is probably the lowest. Yep. So you got safeties, then you got corners, you got. Yep outside and interior and well, you're still well, looking at one of the cheapest safeties rooms in the nfl yeah. okay well let me do something different let me flip it and say on the broncos who's making more than seven million dollars uh, on defense um and you do have some rookies like like pat but i think mm-hmm. even he's this year is making more than seven million dollars um you have uh zach a- zach allen uh-huh. he's making a lot more than seven million dollars you have dj jones who very much could still be cut because you could save ten million dollars yep so like is that it Alex is making like right six. almost that. He's at yep. six, yeah. And besides that, you would point to a rebuild, though. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. That's, that's to exactly. my point. Like, if you had guys making bread on the defense, you would say, okay, they're building something. Yeah. To go for something. Because nobody, they've eliminated all the money from the defense. Now you look and say they're paying minimums, not minimums, but just like. Yeah, they're not paying a lot. Yeah. Median, yeah. median average salaries to these guys for a potential to rebuild. Yeah, you just, I mean, you just replaced Justin Simmons with, with uh, Brandon uh, Jones. 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 There we go. Yeah. Jones, Joseph. Yeah. Like, that's, that's, I mean, a clear rebuild sign. He's now your second, third, third or fourth highest paid, depending on if they yeah. let DJ Jones go. Which is a sign that they're not, side of the ball. which means they're not paying anybody. Yeah. 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 But they are. They decided to pay him, and I think a big thing with with Brandon Jones, if you want to look at it as a rebuild, is he's twenty five years old. Yeah. Now he's going to be twenty six this year. The best thing about his age, same birthday as me, 
April 2nd mm-hmm. birthdays, me and Brandon. Cut him, get rid of him quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so this is a guy where you know, we look and we say, when you go into a rebuild, okay, when you go into a rebuild, you don't have to trade everyone that has value. And uh-huh. I think we've had some conversations about Pat Sertan. Like, well, if you're going to rebuild, you might as well get rid of Pat. No, 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 no. Is Pat going to be on this team when the rebuild is complete? Uh-huh. When they're a good team now? Yes, Pat Sertan hopefully is still on the team in terms of hopefully it's not over 10 years from now that the Broncos are mm-hmm. good again. Brandon Jones at 25, 26 this coming season um, could definitely be on the team. Sean Payton's not here for a 10-year rebuild. He's here for a, a quick rebuild if they are, in fact, rebuilding. So um, he could be 29 years old when the Bronco, in three years from now when you the know, Broncos are trying to be good. You know, everybody's been saying, like, Sean doesn't want to be rebuilt. And I don't necessarily believe he does, but I'm starting to think about it, like, it's not a bad situation to be in. No. Like, they brought you in. They gave you the keys to the city. If you kind of sit back and say, I'm going to take these next couple of years and I'm going to rebuild. I'm going to make everybody whole. Okay, now it's time for a new contract. I've rebuilt this thing. You've been paying me well, but now I need a little bit more money. Yeah. So now Sean gets to, like, you know, in some ways double dip, get paid, get paid again, and not have to ever look for another team and just retire. It's not a bad situation to be in. Exactly. So I was thinking maybe he doesn't mind a little rebuild. Just in, just in time for him to get another contract. It's, yep. it's not a bad situation for him to be in, Todd. I totally agree. But he better not come out in the owners' meetings the next time we talk to him in two weeks and say, like, I'm going to be pissed if we don't make the playoffs. Like, we're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're all gas. The messaging has to change a little bit because if he does year in and year out over the next couple of years say, like, yes, we uh, um, are Super Bowl contending. We're fighting for the – you know, we, we expect to make the playoffs. And then he – consistently falls very short of that because the team is in a rebuild, then that's when the expectation, and if he's telling ownership that, then that's when it's like, no, you don't get another deal. You just came in here and had losing seasons back to back to back when you told us you were trying to win. I go the other way. I think if if they miss the playoffs and Sean Payton isn't pissed off about it, I'm going to be pissed off. Like if he, if he, regardless of what he does to the team, if he doesn't make the playoffs and is like, oh yeah, all right. Like, no, no, no. Like, you were an NFL head coach. If that is not disappointing, like, I, I, even if everybody on the outside saying, no, they don't really have much of a chance, it's not really going to happen, your head coach needs to be thinking, I am going to find a way to win enough games to make this happen. And if he's not, that is that is a massive problem. No, yeah. not doing a rebuild. Not doing really? a rebuild. Well, well, I kind of I kind of agree with Hank a little yeah. bit. I know, I'm, I know I shouldn't do that. Yeah, but that's fair. Yeah, uh, I get it. I kind of agree look, because, God. you know, just like we watch those press conferences, the players are watching. And the way you mm-hmm. take guys that are either not top tier or not the greatest and get them to play out of their minds and play at a high level is that one, you give them the confidence and two, you set expectations. Mm-hmm. So the way you take a team that is not built to win a Super Bowl or not built to necessarily make a playoff run and take them to the playoffs is you put that in everybody's mind. That's what we're going to do. That's what we need to do. That's what we got to have. And that's how you get those guys to play good football. That's setting culture too. Yep. Like in the Sean Payton culture isn't going to be like, Hey guys, we're not doing much this year. Just is do your best. Again, it I, just doesn't work. It, it's of course he's not going to come out and say, "Yeah, we're fine with losing." Um, but I guess what what in terms of this conversation, it's the message that he's telling the owners, uh-huh. and that that can be behind closed doors of like, "Yeah, we're, mm-hmm. we're taking our." He's our probably had some real conversations with them like behind closed doors. Oh yeah, he's probably kept it real. I yeah, like totally. Sure. Yep, yep. Um, like there's okay. definitely a plan. If there's no plan and this is just like chaos, that would be disappointing. So the way this thing has boiled down, I think has been a big, big win for one quarterback that the Broncos might be in on. And the Broncos might have to finance their future in order to get him. After I tell you about our friends over at American Financing, where if the Broncos need to turn to someone to finance something, American Financing is the place. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've worked with Peyton Manning. They've worked with Sean Payton. They've worked with John Elway. American financing is definitely the Broncos financing spot. So if you need some help, they're going to help you because they've saved their customers an average of $854 a month. That's a $10,000 a year by refinancing. So if you need help, go to American Financing where everyone can save money. So check them out. 
Call them at 303-695-7000. That's 303-695-7000. Or go to AmericanFinancing.net slash DNVR because you may be able to delay two mortgage payments on top of getting your monthly payment reduced. So check them out, AmericanFinancing.com slash DNVR or give them a call at 303-695-7000. NMLS 1823-34, NMLSConsumerAccess.org. Maybe about tell, tell our friends about uh, being a diehard. Oh, there it us. is. Um, oh, I didn't even see that. I know. They were kind of stuck I together. Like, yeah. oh, I was like, oh, I thought it was <laughs> I know. Um, so being a diehard's cool. Uh, let's see. Yesterday I put up the Broncos' five biggest needs coming into the offseason. Uh, or into free agency. I don't think safety was among them. Um, just mostly because there are so many needs. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of other cool perks, too. We got the, the diehard-only content on there. We've got uh, discounts at the bar. We got discounts on events. We got discount shirts. Every year, you get another shirt. Um, it, there's just so many different perks. And the 20% off a bunch of stuff can add up really quickly if you know you want to come to a couple tailgates or you want to buy some new clothes. Um ad free on the website, a whole bunch of little stuff like that that we throw in there as well. So become a diehard, support us, because that's that's what we really appreciate is uh, that that is what makes us able to keep doing all these things that we do. So um, definitely head over to the website and join our Discord, do all those sorts of things if you become a diehard. Do you think now with Kirk Cousins, dark. we're off? No, no, we're still oh, we're still going. We just lost the monitor. Okay. Um, so... Would you say with Kirk Cousins likely going to uh, um, either Minnesota or Atlanta that Sam Darnold is now kind of the in the lone category for that tier two free agent quarterback right now with Baker mm. Mayfield gone, with Russell Wilson gone? Jeez. Is it, is it Kirk Cousins and then Sam Darnold? Because that's kind of how I view it. I mean, Sam Darnold is the same to me as Gardner Minshew, Jacoby Brissett. Um Tyrod Taylor falls in there. Jameis Winston. Big. Tannehill's probably right in there as well. Drew Locke is probably right in there as well. I'd say that, that all those guys are about the same. It's a big difference in my eyes with Sam Darnold really? and those guys. Why? Wow. Um, potential. Potential. From he, where, 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 is potential? Potential? I, where is I, that I'm potential? Where is that potential? I'm not saying for me. I'm saying how he's viewed in the NFL, Todd. You know oh. more than anyone how potential, how being the number three overall pick, how getting to be under Kyle Shanahan in San Francisco last year. He had his quarterback rehab. He has that potential. Just how much teams want to hold on to that and ride with that. I hadn't even yeah, started writing for my college paper when the – when he was playing college football, what you, when he what got drafted, saying? what are you saying by that? Wait, what? It's. I mean, it's been forever ago. Like he's played and played and played and played. I mean, he's got what six NFL seasons already. There's, there's no reason to think he has any sort of potential at this point. I mean, twice ever he's completed sixty percent of his passes. One was last year when he went ten for twenty eight. Like there's sixty three touchdowns, fifty six interceptions in his career. There is absolutely no reason to believe that Sam Darnold has any amount of potential, and I don't know how you could see anything differently. He's 26 years old. What did we just say about Brandon Jones? Brandon Jones is going to be 26 this year. And he's been playing. And he's young. But he's Sa played well. Sam, well Sam but Darnold. you could be young and trash. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yes. Well, Justin Fields is young, too. What are we Justin that Fields about? has potential, though. I'm not going to let you talk bad about Justin Fields. No? He's, he uh, has okay. more potential than Sam Darnold. I don't, right now? I mean, you're... Com yeah, he d he does. One just came off a of plane uh, and elevating from. One's younger. Yep. And one has just been playing. I yep. don't know if you learn if he learned anything under uh, Kyle Shanahan. Who knows? It's true. It's also when we saying this about Baker before last year. He was coming off the practice squad for the LA Rams. Hundred percent. But ba but Baker had that done things. Right, Baker had gone the to the playoffs. Right situation. Like, like I wouldn't. And and Baker was a Baker had done things in the NFL is the difference. Like, he had won games in the NFL. Like, he'd had good seasons. Like, it wasn't like every year he was good, but he at least shown something. With Sam Darnold, he's shown nothing. But I'm not betting on that more than... It's just like... Like, we talk about rookie quarterbacks yep. all the time. Like, you're not betting that every quarterback comes out like C.J. Stroud. It just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. I'm not betting that a guy that played in the NFL for multiple years that got all the way, had chance after chance after chance, hits the practice squad, and all of a sudden has a good year. I'm not betting on that. You know what I'm no, saying? So exactly. I'm not, I, I wouldn't take the chance on it. Yeah. I, I mean, again, like Sam Darnold, I put him... Gardner Minshew, I think, is probably just a better quarterback. Um, 
the other guys like Tannehill, Jacoby Brissett, Jameis Winston, Tyre T- Drew Locke, take your pick. That that's totally fair that you guys yeah. disagree with me. And let me make this clear. I am not saying that I no, you want him. Sam- no, you want no, no, no. You wanted Mac Jones, and you want Sam Darnold. <laughs> I did want Mac Jones. That's very sad that he is now a backup quarterback. Uh, I'm not saying that, that that's how I view Sam Darnold. I think that's how the NFL is going to view him, and I think we are going to see that play out this week, maybe even today. I think Sam Darnold is going to get a much bigger deal than people think. How much do you think? And maybe it's you know two years, $10 million each year, uh-huh. $20 million. Um, I think it's going to be something that is that's a lot of money for for what uh, you guys think of him. I just don't know who's I, giving you that. You might to him. be right, and I just think it's crazy because you're right with the quarterback market. I think I think he could maybe get like five to ten a year. Like mm-hmm. Sidham got five to be a, a year. backup, even just to be a backup. I think he's gonna get at least a chance to compete for a starting role. Again, Ugh. I'm saying keep your eye on that because I think it's. I think the way the NFL is viewing this quarterback market right now, it's Kirk Cousins is the class of this yep. free agent. I honestly think number two, because of potential, it's Sam Darnold. And then a drop-off of then you have the guys of the Tannehills, the Jameis Winstons, the Gardner Minshews. So I'm just saying watch out for Sam Darnold potentially getting a bigger deal than, uh, than people expect. And people in the chat – Hate this idea. <laughs> oh, yeah. They are killing How could you me not? for bringing this up. And I'm just saying, be prepared for it. And be prepared for it because the Broncos could be in this conversation for Sam Darnold. We're rebuilding, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Go get your door. <laughs> um, okay. Let's, uh, we, we touched on it earlier. Broncos signing PJ Locke. Uh, to a two-year, $7 million deal. Mm -hmm. Essentially, what it boils down to is is guaranteed for one year. So he's on the team this year for $3.5 million. Broncos can move off him after this year um, if they don't want to, if they want to bring him back for $3.5 million. I personally really like the move. P.J. Locke is kind of like Brandon Jones was last year, like a borderline starter. Uh Um, And so I think he is certainly, with the Broncos not valuing the safety position, I definitely think he's good enough to be a starter for the Broncos. Yeah, I think it's the right move. I think he played well when he got his opportunity last year, and I think it's a way to keep him on the squad and allow him to still develop and grow. And if he turns out to be great, it's a great move by the team. You know, If they don't like what they see, then they can move on on from him fairly quick but i think that he will come and play well i think that he does have a skill set that fits well in the nfl especially as that strong safety position um so i think it's a great move yeah and i also think it's a great move i think that that's a no-brainer i think because what comes out to three and a half a year is that what it was four a year something like that Um, either way super cheap um and for a guy like that like you can just trust him to do a whole bunch of different things and if, if things don't work out well for him and he doesn't wind up being a starting safety, well, guess what? He's one of your three best special teams players. And for three and a half million bucks, that's totally worth it. Um, especially in a world where like Justin Sternod could be gone and there's there's some other dominoes there. I mean, you've talked about Tremont Smith potentially being gone, which I think would be an insane decision. But I mean, having PJ Locke as that floor is why I love it so much. And on top of that, like... I would say that he's a starting caliber player, but not necessarily a game changer. But then you look back and he's won them games. Like starting with the 49ers game last season when he subbed in and had like the forced fumble to the, that won the game. Um, this year at the interceptions with the forced fumble. Like I wonder if he should be seen more closely to a Jaquan McMillan than he is in terms of value. I think whenever he's gotten the opportunities played well, I think there are a couple times you look back in coverage and like those red zone corner routes or something like that. And you're like, uh, you know, the window might've been just a little bit bigger, but the quarterback missed it. Like he might've been bailed out by a couple of those where the coverage wasn't perfect, but the results kind of speak for themselves. And so getting him back on that deal, especially with the way the safety room is now constructed, you've got Brandon Jones is a starter. Um, PJ, Caden Stearns, and then the young guys, JL Skinner, like they'll have their chance to compete. And then because you have the versatility with Brandon for sure, with PJ probably, if you wanted to play him the nickel, you might be able to get away with that. I, I think that if things pop there, you've got room to get three guys on the field. So I, I love it. Yeah, and uh, with Caden Stearns, he's super talented. When he's been on the field, he's been really good. 
but he just consistently battled injuries. So now you have Brandon Jones mm-hmm. is definitely a starting safety, getting paid that $7 million a year. And then you have PJ and Caden to uh, help each other out, to compete with each other, and they'll probably both be on the field at the same time uh, or during games and just rotating. Um, so a, a solid safety room for the Broncos. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a good room. Um, and they can they can make some things happen with that room. I think they can. Yep. Okay, let's wrap this show up by getting to the headline of this conversation. Right as we were diving into the Jerry Judy trade news, we got word of the Brandon Jones signing, so we kind of shifted to that mm-hmm. right away. But let's get back. Broncos move on from Jerry Judy. The question is, after restructuring Tim, getting him back, um, moving on from Jerry Judy, is Cortland Sutton now safe? Is he going to be a Bronco this year, and you're confident putting the stamp on him being back? I think so. I don't think there's a reason to move on from him at this point. You've kind of freed up the money that you wanted to, in some ways, more money than you needed to. Um, you got to pay somebody. We can't, we can't just go cheap all the way around <laughs> the board. So uh, I think he was our best wide receiver last year, and I think he's proven that he deserves to be uh, our number one receiver. So mm-hmm. maybe, maybe we bring somebody in to add depth or play slot. Uh, but I don't think we need somebody to take Cortland's position. Yep, and if you have a rookie quarterback, you obviously want decent receivers at the very least, and I think right now you look at it with Court, Marvin, and Tim, and you're solid. Like, that's a that's a starting wide receiver trio, and if things go well, I mean, Marvin could turn out to be really good for, for being your number two, number three. Tim could turn out to be really good for being your number two, number three. Um, so you, you you have everything plugged in a way that you can be happy with, especially because you still have those younger depth guys behind them um, with you know Brandon Johnson and Jalen Virgil. Uh, I guess they haven't brought little Jordan back, right? No, uh, but but that could be coming here soon. Um, so, so you're definitely in a good spot there, and... There's also room, if you want, in a deep receiver class to go draft a guy in the third, fourth round. I think that would kind of round things out really well. Um, so I think they're set. And I think the only situation where they would trade court still is if they wind up drafting somebody before that. If they go and like pick one of these first-round receivers, then maybe there's like a draft day trade. Because that's the thing about court is you really could trade him later in the offseason if you wanted to. But again, like replacing court with a, with a rookie... And bringing in a rookie quarterback, like it just doesn't mesh well. So I think it just makes sense to stand pat there and maybe add a guy with one of those fourth, fifth round picks. Yeah, I don't, I don't think with the moves the Broncos have made so far, it changes Cortland's status on the team really at all. I think bringing back Tim Patrick was huge in terms of saying, look, we, we can keep court, but we don't have to keep court. And if the Broncos are rebuilding, you can't ignore the nearly $10 million in cap savings they would have by moving on from him, just like with DJ Jones. DJ Jones is a good player, but you point to his $10 million cap that you could save by moving on from him, and you say, okay, well, is that probably worth it at this moment that we're in right now if we truly are rebuilding? If you feel that way about DJ Jones, same thing with Cortland Sutton because we know that Marvin Mims is absolutely viewed as a starting wide receiver. Uh, for the Broncos. He's just taking Jerry Judy's role right there. Tim Patrick, when healthy, is a starting wide receiver. So there's two starting wide receivers. And then Brandon Johnson. I mean, if they're going rebuilding, they're going young. Brandon Johnson showed a lot of promise and <coughs> still very young. Where I've, He could be comfortable being the third wide receiver. And now the Broncos have eight picks. So they, I wouldn't be surprised they use one or two of those on wide receivers. Even if it is a day three pick, Sean has had success with rookie third uh, day three picks at the receiver spot. So I don't think that this means that Cortland Sutton is guaranteed to be back by any means, but it also doesn't mean that they're going to move on from him Mm -hmm. before the new league year on Wednesday. Uh, $2 million of his contract comes guaranteed on the 17th, but that's just $2 million. Um, So this is something where... And in a trade, you could still... It doesn't change what you retain. Right. So I I think this is one where it's going to be maybe a more dragged out... Um, process of if court is back or not yeah i do think if they do go the trade court route and they're saying they're with tim patrick marvin mims and brandon johnson you just can't have a rookie quarterback you you can't do it like you got to bite the bullet with stidham or with somebody else um because you're just you you can't expect enough production out of that group because again like tim he was a lock for 700 yards then he got hurt so you call him a lock for 700 yards mims 
give him 702, which is obviously a pretty big step forward. Brandon Johnson, 700 yards, big step forward. And then you're still looking for another 900 from your running backs and tight ends just to get to 3,000 passing yards. And so you're... eh, you just can't put a quarterback into that situation. Not a rookie. If you're if you're biting the bullet, waiting for next year to get a quarterback, you could make it work. You would save a bunch of money. You're not competitive, though. Like, you can't expect to be competitive. If things go well, you're pushing 3,000 passing yards. Well, maybe it's a rookie and someone else, and that's kind of how they bridge the gap. We're mm-hmm. going to talk about that on the mailbag, so stay tuned to DNVR Sports on YouTube to get that mailbag. And before we get out of here, let's hit some comments that we've got. One coming in on the website, or one coming in with a super chat from our guy, Rickert, who says, um, one, is it coincidence that Sean Payton cut out <laughs> cut all the NFLP re- NFLPA reps out of last year? You laugh. You think it's true? I don't know. I just think it's funny. <laughs> it might be a coincidence, but that's hilarious. When it yeah. comes to the kicker position, that might have had something to do with it in terms of like, uh, no, you're a kicker. You kick the ball. You yeah. don't do anything else. <laughs> well, you know. Yep. And two says, could we get draft compensation for Kush signing with the Titans? Yes. The Broncos cannot get compensation mm-hmm. or compensatory picks from Justin Simmons because they cut him, but with Cushenberry expecting that it's probably a big deal they probably will be in line to get a compensatory pick and we found out about compensatory picks the broncos did not get any from last year's class but remember compensatory picks for the free agents that signed this year you'll get a compensatory pick in 2025 not for this year yep and if they don't sign another big time free, if brandon jones is their big one i would imagine they will get one it's just tough the formulas are super complicated because it starts by like ranking every single player in the NFL based on their salary. And so then that's the initial list. And then I think you get like a point per snap that you play and then like for awards and it's just like a really complicated formula and then they cancel out somehow. But I would imagine you'd get like a fifth round compensatory pick, maybe fourth for Lloyd if you don't make any other moves or if Brandon Jones is your biggest. So let's round this off here. Do you think Brandon Jones will be the Broncos' biggest move of free agency at just under seven million dollars? Um, yes, yes, Henry. I'll say no. I'll stand by my my take before. I think they still get somebody who who makes about ten. What position? Oh, it could be a linebacker. I guess that'd probably be the big place you look. Um, defensive line, probably not, since it's not Wilkins. Um, offensively tight ends probably aren't going to cost that much. So I'll probably stick with linebacker. Okay. And I'll go. Yes, as well. Um, could be corner too, I guess. And I'll go with quarterback, whether it's a starter, whether it's a backup, I think somewhere around maybe that $10 million mark. Sam Darnold. I don't know. Just (laughs) be open to a Broncos country because it might happen. Uh, We'll be back tomorrow to continue to break down what's going on in free agency. If any big news happens, we'll be back with you on an emergency podcast. So stay tuned to DNVR Sports on YouTube. And also (laughs) check out the mailbag. We'll be talking more about this. See you tomorrow. (laughs) 